Seam Reef is best known for Angkor Wat and its historical artefacts, but there's much more to do in the city. I'm at Far Circus talking to Craig Dodge. He's my sales director, is that correct? Director of sales and marketing. Director of sales and marketing. Just call uh, me the sales guy. The sales guy <laughs> at, uh, at the circus. Uh, Craig, tell me about it. So Far Circus has been in Siem Reap since 2013, and we're the social business extension of a nonprofit school, Far Pong Le Pak, based in Batambang. The idea of the school is to use art to heal the community after the war, um, and also revive some of the arts that were lost during the war. And our mission here is to give uh, good paying jobs to the graduates of the school, as well as fund the school's free education and social uh, community activities. So we do that through selling tickets to nightly performances um, and refreshments and, and uh, souvenir sales. So the performers here, where are they from? Batambang. The, so the school is based in Batambang. It's kind of like a community school and it's almost like a family school in a way because a lot of the families uh, that live in the media area uh, the kids went there. It was free. Um, some of them went there because they got free food and they were hungry. So a lot of the students come from really difficult social backgrounds. Um, and because it's a, a community school, we have a lot of family that uh, were in the circus together. So there was one family that had seven siblings in the circus at the same time. So this is a um circus school? It is. It's Well, it's an art school. So it started with drawing classes. Um, and then gradually added other art forms like uh, music, dance, drama, uh, of course, circus. And they now also have uh, applied visual arts like graphic design and animation. Tell me who the circus is aimed at. Is it for children, for adults, for teens? That's a really good question. And, and let me take it sideways a little bit. People who come to Cambodia from all over the world, right? Every culture has a different concept of what circus is. So where I'm from in the United States, it, traditionally it was like aimed at kids a lot. You had clowns and animals and silliness. Um, but then uh, European and Australia, they have a much deeper history of uh, cultural circus. Um, and of course, everybody knows about Cirque du Soleil, which is a little bit fantastical and, and visual. Far Circus is unlike anything. It's, it's uniquely Cambodian storytelling. The artists, along with their coach and teachers, create these stories based on their own life experiences. They, they pull also from recent history and, and uh, society and create stories. And because it's a story based on their own existence, which sometimes is difficult, they come from very difficult backgrounds, most of them, um, there's this element of overcoming something difficult in life. So, oh, right. So, so audiences often are taken on a bit of a journey and it starts out and some things are relatable because everybody faces challenges in their life. And then it ends on this euphoric, you know, success, yep. not all the stories, but some of them. So to, to go back to answer your question directly, it's for everybody. Yeah. Kid, kids like it. Kids are the toughest audience. You know, kids can't sit still for a long time. So it really has to be yep. good to keep them entertained and I'm thrilled to say it does. Um, audience, or adults in the audience connect on a very different level. They understand a lot of the subtext and, and connect with the storyline. So it appeals to everybody. There are no, no animals? No animals. Although I will tell you a story that one time a, a stray dog wandered in from the stage entrance in the middle of a show. And, and I was sitting in the front row and I had to coax the dog over to, and, I don't know if audiences thought that was part of the show or not, but no, we don't use audio. We don't, don't use animals. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us what FAR brings to CM Reap in terms of entertainment? Uh, as you said in your introduction, I think Siem Reap and Cambodia generally is world famous for the temples um, and the history and the, cult, the ancient culture, traditional culture, traditional dance. Um, some of the tragic history people are also familiar with before they come here. Um, what FAR is, is an expression of contemporary uh, arts and culture. And it's really kind of exciting in Cambodia right now where there's a revival uh, of not just traditional arts, but contemporary arts. And I would say FAR is a, a fusion of both because you get a little, you get elements of both. Uh, the music, for example, much of it is using traditional instruments, but in a new way. Um, and as I'm not an arts person, I'm a 
I've been in tourism by trade. Um, uh, but what I think people can connect with and that will be interested in and drawn towards is it's unique, it's authentic and original. Sure, so what, what is far in the community? I would say far is the next thing that everybody has to do after the temples. So during the day, people are at the temples, they might do some adventure. There's some great adventure stuff, especially like for families. Go to Angkor Park and do zip line, do a bicycle tour, do a Vespa tour. Um, there's a wake park for, for the aquatic kids. Um, but in the evening, there, there wasn't a lot to do, I, I think, generally. There's Pub Street, which everybody's yeah. familiar with. Um, but in terms of a really unique, original live entertainment, it's far. So this is where we are uh, in terms of uh, things to do in Siem Reap. We are the, the most unique, authentic, original evening live entertainment. What else would you recommend people see apart from the circle? Daytime or nighttime? Both. Both. <laughs> so daytime, I, daytime first. My mission in life is to get people to experience things beyond the temples. Right. I, I, I think I don't need to recommend any yep, temples, yep. but there's just some really cool things. Like in the park, there's just all kinds of trails carved through the jungle that is easy hiking or biking that spend a day doing that. And you're gonna be taken back into a, a completely different time to, to be on the jungle trails. Um, another thing like the Angkor Park ticket includes yep. a lot of really, really cool experiences outside the park. So Cabal Spin, for example, it's a, a kilometer and a half a hike up a hill to these ancient waterfalls and riverbed carvings that uh, a lot of Cambodians will go to it because it's very spiritual. They, they believe as the water runs over the carvings, it becomes oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, holy water. And so yeah. you'll see Cambodians go up there and, and take a dip under the, the mm -hmm. waterfall, but there's not a whole lot of international visitors up there, but it's included on your ticket. Oh, go! Yeah. go, go, go. <laughs> And then like around Siem Reap too, there's like uh, Phnom Krom, which is a hill towards yep, yep. the lake. There's an ancient temple up there. It's where all my Cambodian friends like to go for barbecue and sunset in the evening. And that's included on your ticket. Um, and Phnom Bok is another one of my mm -hmm. favorite. It's like 600 and something steps up a, mm -hmm. up a hill or a, a really cool winding trail. Tremendous views. So those, those are things. And I'm a bicyclist. I mean, you might not be able to tell, but um, there's a lot of great biking, not just in the jungle trails, but in the countryside. And at nighttime, I think p people will gravitate towards Pub Street because everybody kind of knows Pub Street, but there's some really cool other things to do. So uh, there's Street 26 now. They call it the Wat Bo neighborhood. There's some really unique pubs and, and uh, restaurants there that a lot of people don't know about, but a lot of expats and local people go to that area for, for evening entertainment. And there's some tour companies that for a visitor who's maybe a little bit afraid to venture out on their own, there's one called um, Adventures Cambodia. They do Vespa foodie tours. I mean, how fun is that? They'll take you to all these local places on the back of a Vespa. Really? And it's good for families. I mean, yeah. kids and adults both can enjoy that or Taste Siem Reap, they do these uh, pre-planned tuk-tuk rides to, you do like a, not a pub crawl, but you just take, you visit different restaurants and bars, and so you get kind of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are things I think people should try. Yes. So they've been out in the afternoon, they come to far. What happens when they come to far? What do they see? So that's a really good question. So the first thing people will see is we have a, a boutique with locally made items. 
A lot of times if, if you're shopping for something that's locally made and you go down to old market, a lot of that stuff's imported. Yep. But the stuff that we have is all locally made crafts. Okay. Some of it by our own people, some from other uh, local crafts organizations. Then people will pass here into a cafe. And pre-COVID, it was just kind of like a sit-down restaurant. But post-COVID, um, we realized that visitors want engaging activities. So we transformed the dining experience into a street food experience. So we have food and beverage uh, stands set up and people can go around, they can talk to the chef, they can see how things are made. So that's the first thing people will experience. Um, before the main circus show, we have some student cultural dancers. So uh, visitors can get it, it's free, it's included in the ticket, and see a cultural dance performance by, by young students just learning. How old will these be? It varies. I mean, we've, we've had kids like uh, maybe 8 to 10 and yeah. up to their late teens. Yeah. Um, but they go to these uh, cultural schools to learn to dance, and then later on they can get jobs in some of the Apsara dinner yeah. dance theaters. So it's kind of a it's professionalization for them to be able yeah, to yeah, get yeah. some in experience yeah. in front of an audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, can you tell us anything about where people who want to see Khmer music or Khmer classical dance, where, where, where can they go? So for Khmer classical dance, there's several dinner dance theaters where it's in, included in a package. Quite often it's a buffet dinner and so people might be moving around. My personal favorite for cultural dance performance is called the Apsara Theater uh, next to um, Angkor Village Resort. And it's the oldest Apsara Theater in Siem Reap. And I think if I'm going to see an ancient cultural dance performance, mm -hmm. I want to see it in see it a very traditional theater. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. beautiful wooden building, um, the Apsara Theater. But there's lots of places they can go. Most, Some of the bigger hotels also have uh, cultural dance performances during their evening program. Yep. Um, there's, there's a, If people want to experience some Cambodian 60s rock and roll, which was yeah, really yeah. huge before uh, the war. Yeah. There's a restaurant called Black Forest that has, I'm not sure if it's every night, so forgive me, but uh, they also have Cam Cambodian 60s rock and roll entertainment there. Um, there's also a restaurant, if you want something that's Khmer and contemporary yeah. music, yep, yep. Uh, the Sokak River Lounge, the owner is also a singer. Right. So again, I'm sorry, I apologize, I don't know their schedule, but uh, up on the first floor, they have a live music. And so he sings, uh, sometimes visiting other famous singers from Phnom Penh will, will also sing there. So those are places people can go for live entertainment. And music, jazz, is there Western music anywhere? If there, somebody wants that? there is, but I'll, I'll tell you, I think it's mobile. <laughs> what I encourage people to do is check Facebook, which check seems it. like a weird thing to do. But if you look at like the local events in Facebook, yep. you can see where, because there are some, some expat, mostly expat, yep, yep. Uh, bands that do kind of move around at different restaurants. Um, Pub Street, of course, there's all, all kinds of music going on, but um, I think visitors want to see something that's not so touristy. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Pub Street. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. happening place, um, but I would get off of Pub Street and go explore some of those others. Yeah. How do visitors change Cambodian people's lives? How does tourism make a difference? That's a really great, great question because tourism has such potential to do either good or bad, depending on how it's, it's handled. And I think the kind of tourism that's really good for Cambodia is the kind that gets as close and direct to local people as possible. So, you know, you frequent the things that like a cooking class where you're yeah, in a yeah. village that's, that's doing, you know, you're giving yeah, jobs yeah, yeah. to people in the village, um, <clears throat> using the tuk-tuks. Uh, and to, to bring that question back to FAR, if I may, yep. so but by attending a show at FAR, a visitor will not only enjoy the most unique mm -hmm. entertainment and fun, have a great time, um, the, the money that's spent here funds the school. The school yeah. So it's, it's not, it is, it is money well spent. So that's another way they can is by, by frequenting local businesses.
<laughs> Tell us about the time you broke a, a Guinness of what records. What happened there? That was really a amazing experience because it happened during COVID. Yeah. So, you know, businesses, especially in Sam Reap, depend on overseas visitors for survival. Yeah. COVID stopped all of that immediately. Yeah. So not only, I mean, it put us at, at jeopardy of going out of existence, but it also put the school at jeopardy yeah. because we were funding 60% of the school's annual budget through our sales. So the school started to get really creative. What can we do yeah. to make a mark to keep people's morale up because COVID was really depressing yeah. for everybody. So uh, they come up with the idea to, to set the world record for the longest circus performance, ah, which yeah, was yeah. a very ambitious project for anybody. But, right. you know, it, it got everybody together as a team. And I, I remember uh, hearing some of the artists say, in, on one hand, they were really excited about representing and, and breaking a record <clears throat> in front of the whole world. Mm. I mean, that was really a, a thing for them. We're going to be in front of the whole world. And then they're like, wow, we've only ever done one hour performances. Yeah. How are we going to do 24 hours, 24 hours plus? So it, it was really an amazing event. We had, uh, it was live streamed around the world. And uh, yeah, so we set the world record. And, and the, because it was during COVID, Guinness couldn't send anybody here to, to verify it. So they gave us all this criteria that we had to meet, which yes. was a certain number of live audience, a certain uh, mm. other technical things. Mm. So people in Batambang lined up for blocks to be, just be part Lots of this, of this event, you know? So they, every, I don't know how often it was, 30 minutes or every one hour, they would empty out the, the big top and mm. bring in the next group of people that were part of setting the world record, yeah, that we yeah, had yeah. to have the audience. The audience. So yeah, that was really exciting and it, it boosted everybody's morale and it was, you know, they did something they never thought they could do. So it was just really a, a very positive, happy feeling. Yeah, so what's next? <gasps> oh gosh, hopefully not another world record. I think for us, uh, part of what we hope to do more of are international tours. So we, we've been, we've performed overseas many times. We've been in the US a few times, Australia a few times. Um, Singapore, it's, it's a challenge for us to do that because we don't have the money. So it, it takes us, we have to find producers in those other countries to, you know, maybe it's a festival organizer yeah. or somebody to produce a tour that goes to multiple places. We were just in New York City and Montreal. I mean, just, just off Broadway. Yeah. So they were really excited to see the Statue of Liberty yeah, yeah. and perform in the Big Apple. Um, so we hope to do more of that. Uh, we also would like to open theaters uh, elsewhere in Cambodia. So we were considering a concept sort of like a dinner theater concept for Phnom Penh. Um, but we're, we're investigating how can we make it a unique and fun way. So we're looking at like Teatro Zanzini in the U.S. or Zanzani, I, I know I don't pronounce it right. Kind of a Moulin Rouge yeah, sort yeah, of a yeah, feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. stuff like that. Before COVID, we bought the land behind us here. Mm -hmm. And our plan was to open like an arts experience park where people could come out during the daytime and uh, try different art forms. They could learn to dance. They could maybe learn stone carving. They could, mm -hmm. It could be a place for other arts groups besides our own to have a space to present what they offer to the public because it's hard for small arts groups to, to have to survive, funding yeah. Yeah, and to have a, a permanent venue. So mm -hmm. COVID of course messed all that up. Um, we still have the land. We're just started, we just planted a couple hundred trees back there to get it started. And you may also be aware there's uh, going to be a new museum that opens up soon in Siem Reap, and that's actually on part of our land yep, back yep. there. Oh, it's yeah, the yeah. Angkor Immersive Museum. Yep, yep. Um, so that's another one of our projects. Mm -hmm. So we're still, the, f as far as like our arts experience park, we're still developing that, but right. that's in the future. What would you say to somebody who thinking of coming to Cambodia, thinking of coming to Siem Reap, but not really very sure. How would you convince them? You know, the, the thing that always troubled me, and I think it's been an issue here for a long time, is uh, people aren't aware of what's here. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, and when they, they come to Southeast Asia, maybe they're gonna go to Thailand or Vietnam, and then Cambodia is sort of a side trip. And because the only thing they know is Angkor Wat, they only plan a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Invariably, what happens though, once they're here, they discover all the amazing, fun things there are to do. Uh, we, we participated in a survey at the airport with GIZ a couple years ago. And, you know, we, 
part of the question, among others, was, you know, what were you aware of before you mm -hmm. got here? And then when you left, and invariably people said, I wish I would have known how much there is to do here. So part of my answer to your question would be people, we can do a better job of letting the world know of all these things to do, but I would encourage travelers to do a little bit of homework and take a look because there's a lot of fun stuff to do here. So after what you said, do you find many visitors coming back? Not as many as I would hope. I think for most people who come to Cambodia, it's a once in a lifetime trip. Mm -hmm. But what, what you do notice is sometimes when people come here, they fall in love with it here. Right. And then I will see some people come back year after year. And fortunately, they come back to see us year after year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's up to the individual traveler and how deeply they engage with the society. So let me tell you a little story about that. I, my, of course, I came here first as a tourist yep, before yep. I lived here. And I made friends with my tuk-tuk driver. Yep. And part of that experience was he took us uh, to his family's home out, you know, hour and a half outside of town. I don't know where. That was an amazing experience yep. for me to, to yep. engage with a local family. And that kind of was the process of me falling in love with Cambodia, yep. which brought me back four or five yep. times before I decided to move here. So I, I would say if, if visitors really want to have that kind of experience and for experienced providers like us, yep. if we want to make sure they have it, provide that. I mean, encourage yep. people to experience something unique and local they will fall in love they will come back and get to know local people <clears throat> absolutely because that that was what changed the experience for me i think if you go on a temple tour it's amazing i have nothing but but positive experiences of my own visits yeah, to yeah. the temple but when you get to know the people maybe who lived out there mm -hmm. and you get a whole different viewpoint of what it what it means and, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said before, I'm a bicyclist. And so sometimes I go biking with local friends and we go through the jungle trails. And it's a completely different experience coming up to a temple in a tuk-tuk or a bus than it is to emerge on the backside of a temple from a jungle trail. Yeah, yeah. And I think when guests experience those kind of things, they will want to come back. Okay.